the Bitcoin halving. The technical event sounds simple. Bitcoin miners get paid in Bitcoin to validate transactions and every four years, that reward is halved. But the event is a big deal. Historically, the halving's cut to supply has led to huge rallies for Bitcoin. Just look at this price chart of Bitcoin from its first transaction in 2009. Each halving event has set the stage for a brand new bull run, new all-time highs, and new Bitcoin investors entering the market. But this time, things look a lot different for the world's largest cryptocurrency. Crypto World's Tanea McKeel explains why. 2024's Bitcoin halving is getting a lot of attention. The technical event that cuts the reward paid out to miners happens roughly every four years. In the past, it was only celebrated by a few of the cryptocurrency's biggest cheerleaders. This year, though, the halving is a hot topic. Sometime in the next 12, 18 months, you know, Bitcoin can be over 150,000. Around the halving, where the, the amount of Bitcoin coming to market is cut in half. After that time period, you see another year of a bull market. And the reason for all the attention? There are way more people who care about and invest in Bitcoin than there were in 2020 during the last halving. That's thanks to a wave of adoption during the last cycle and new investment options for crypto curious investors like spot ETFs. This was the defining moment, I think, of Bitcoin, at least right in in this era of its history. Like this was its kind of um, IPO like moment. Pandora's box is now open for institutional adoption of the asset class. Investors are excited because the halving has historically set the stage for Bitcoin's next bull cycle. The event cuts the number of new Bitcoin entering the network each day, and that means tighter supply. Bitcoin now has a clear uh, demand on a very scarce asset, and that asset is about to get even more scarce with Bitcoin halving. That added scarcity often kickstarts Bitcoin's rally to new all-time highs. Looking back at the 2012, 2016, and 2020 halvings, Bitcoin's price ran up about 93 times, 30 times, and 8 times, respectively, from its halving day price to its cycle top. Of course, past performance isn't indicative of future results, and the market is very different this time around. Huge maturation of the asset class, infrastructure development, more people than ever being interested in it. Investors are hoping that this halving event will also lead to big gains, but others think that those golden days of the halving supercharging the market might be behind us. Julio Moreno of CryptoQuant called the halving a once significant event. So with all the hype and debate, what should you expect for Bitcoin's price in the near term? So immediately after, if we're going to define that as like 24 hours, 48 hours a week, like really short term, I don't expect you're going to see much at all. It's not a short term phenomenon. This is a $30 million a day reduction in sell pressure. That effect builds over time. So while that will have an effect on the market, one day, two days, three days, four days after, I don't think you're going to see a whole lot and in the long term, well, if you noticed earlier, each halving event has provided diminishing returns. 2012 saw a bigger rally than 2016, and so on. There are also more ways than ever for investors to push Bitcoin's price higher. I'll come out and say I am a, a skeptic on the fact that the diminishing returns will happen this year. I think this year we see a greater return than last cycle. Because, you know, ultimately what drives an asset price up, any asset price, is not financial models, it's not cash flows, it's people hitting the buy button in their brokerage account. I think it's a little bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy where certainly, you know, a reduction in issuance of Bitcoin does help the uh, price by making it more scarce. But a large part of it is also just bringing it back into headlines, having it be top of mind. You know, in practice, the ETF flows are substantially larger than any sort of uh, increased issuance in, in Bitcoin from Bitcoin miners. So I think it's not a more of a material change and more of just a change in, in perception uh, of the asset. Now, while this event may have a big effect on price, the most direct impact is on the Bitcoin miners. There are more than a dozen publicly traded miners on the network and thousands of smaller private ones around the globe constantly racing to process transactions and get paid in new Bitcoin. Because the event leads to a cut to rewards paid to miners directly, they'll be the first ones to feel the impact of the halving. Crypto World's Talia Kaplan explains how some of the largest publicly traded miners have expanded their businesses to prepare for this cut to their revenue. Bitcoin miners are preparing for the network's biggest event in four years. 
we have a halving coming up here and Riot has a number of ambitious growth plans that we're scaling up our business with. So as the price of Bitcoin appreciates, we should appreciate from that in an outsized way. The rally in Bitcoin really is what's keeping miners in business today when you think about post having The average cost of mining Bitcoin is somewhere around between twenty dollars $25,000 of Bitcoin currently. Post the halving, that'll go to somewhere between thirty-seven, forty-five thousand dollars $45,000 of Bitcoin, maybe $50,000 of Bitcoin in some cases for some miners. And with the Bitcoin price being at 67, 68, 70,000, it means that miners are still mining profitably. Though, what it really means is the miners with large scale will be able to mine profitably. The smaller miners will be put under more pressure. I think that we will see failures in the space. You know, we already saw in the last market, there were a couple bankruptcies, both in the public and the private space. I think we're going to see that again. So I think that there's going to be great opportunity on an M&A basis. We're thinking about the facilities or the data centers that miners are operating in. If there's a data center full of old equipment that is no longer efficient, we'd love to buy the facility and move in. So what exactly is the Bitcoin having? Miners on the network get paid in Bitcoin for verifying transactions. And every four years, the supply of new Bitcoin created to reward miners gets cut in half. This process is hard coded into the Bitcoin protocol itself, meaning no one can change it. This process takes place every 210,000 blocks a block is a collection of verified transactions grouped together. With blocks being validated roughly every 10 minutes, that works out to about every four years. Now, the halving affects the rate at which new Bitcoins are brought into circulation. The supply of Bitcoin is finite. Only 21 million will ever exist. Cutting mining rewards means fewer Bitcoin will enter the market every day. That makes Bitcoin more scarce after each halving. Bitcoin prices have historically risen after past halving events. So for investors, it could mean big returns. For miners, it could mean big losses. If they don't find ways to become more efficient, some miners could even go out of business. If you think about the Bitcoin rewards as, you know, the pie got smaller and all the miners that exist, it's about the size of that pie. We think that there will be miners that are less efficient and can't handle that revenue shock. So we think as many as 30% or you know, 15 to 30% of miners will actually have to turn off, shut down. I think if you look globally, potentially about 15% of the capacity may come under pressure. And by that, I mean that those operations may be unprofitable. And so those miners that have machines that are above the global average in energy consumption will likely come under pressure. So we'll have to see, but I think most of the publicly traded miners are fairly well positioned at this point. The first halving event took place in 2012, four years after the first block was mined on the network. Jump to the most recent halving, 12 and a half new Bitcoins were added to the network at the beginning of 2020. In May, that number was cut in half to six and a quarter. This latest halving will drop rewards to around 3.125, and that process will continue until all 21 million coins have been mined. The expectation is that should happen in about 116 years from now. Riot is positioned to exit 2024, mining more Bitcoin per day than it is right now, despite the halving occurring. We are scaling up our operations by almost a factor of three, and we are implementing an ongoing power strategy that helps decrease our energy costs and gives us an industry leading of cost of production. Our direct cost per Bitcoin uh, in 2023 was just about 7,500 a coin. Now that increases with the halving, but with the price appreciating at a faster rate, we think we are in a very good spot alongside everything we're executing on this year. Miners are expanding their footprint to boost their capacity in an effort to limit their losses post having. Riot acquired more than 31,000 mining machines in February. That same month, CleanSpark announced it completed the acquisition of three Bitcoin mining data centers in Mississippi, which boosted the company's operating hash rate. Earlier this month, Marathon Digital closed a previously announced acquisition of a 200 megawatt Bitcoin mining data center in Texas. The benefit of owning and operating these sites is that it essentially lowers our cost to operate. It lowers our cost to mine Bitcoin because we're now taking out the middleman, if you would. The other thing that's been a very positive impact of this is we've been able to acquire these sites at lower than replacement cost, meaning a cost below what it would have cost us to build them in the first place. So this is a, a great way of kind of being able to expand quickly, leverage other people's capital 
they build the sites and then we come in when the market gets a little weaker for sites and acquire the sites and it's been a very good strategy for us so far but we'll continue to acquire sites and our objective is to be predominantly owned and operated going forward we need to be efficient in order to survive and bitcoin and bitcoin mining is no different to any other industry phil harvey is the founder and ceo of saber 56 a hosting provider and crypto mining consultant he expects to see consolidation among miners following the upcoming halving. Now we're seeing in the, in the space a lot of mergers and acquisitions taking place because the power just isn't there for, for people to go into. So those underlying assets, the power purchase agreements, PPAs, are becoming extremely lucrative. So yes, there will be miners that don't have the capital in order to reinvest and therefore, you know, provided they have a lucrative underlying power asset, will become an M&A target.